Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Green Lantern, Green Arrow number 76 from, I think, 1973 or thereabouts. Uh, so, uh, one of the canards is that comic books have always been political. Is that how you pronounce, like, the Spongebob where the, the letters go capital, you know, lowercase capital F? Comic books have always been political. Um, so for people who want them political right now, which really means they want them of their exact politics all the time, which makes it propaganda, they will say they will bring up essentially the same four or five stories over like the first 50 years of comic book publishing and say comic books were always political. But the politics is like. We don't like robber barons. We don't like war profiteers. <laughs> like, it wasn't that political. Now, in the 60s and especially early 70s, they did start getting more political. But it's so funny to see what being political then versus being political now. Being political now is just propaganda. You can only think one way. One of the things I like to say is, you know, about these people is they will say there is only one way to think about any subject. And you're like... I don't agree about that. Okay, but let okay, so let's say, you know, for the point of conversation, that's true. They're like, okay, so there is only one way to think about every single subject. By an incredible coincidence, the way I believe is the right belief for every single like you don't have like a 95% hit rate, like a 98% hit rate. You have a 100 percent hit rate. I don't believe you. So uh this is um if I remember from reading a million trillion interviews at the time. Usually when you put two heroes together, it means neither one of them was selling that well on their own. So let's try something else. I'm not a DC expert. I don't know. We get this nice, essentially, you know, monochrome cover of, uh, you know, uh, Green Arrow just completely C-blocking Green Lantern as he tries to power up. And then we get into it. Basically, hey, he's having a good day. He's flying through the ghetto and uh, he, he finds uh, some people, you know, what he thinks is like a robbery or an assault. It's actually a tenant of, of a slum getting angry at the uh, slum lord. Now, he just jumps into it. He just sees an assault and he says, you know, I'm going to bring you to jail. Uh, and then we find out that uh, it's, it's a pretty, you know, bad place to live. The, uh, the stairs are falling apart. Now, as far as I know, in the early 70s, things were more lax than they are right now. Right now, you're living in New York City. There's a freaking rail like this. You just make a call and someone from the city is calling the landlord, thre threatening him with a fine of several thousand dollars for having a freaking banister that's not even connected properly. So it's the classic thing of, is this illegal or do you need to talk to your you know, politicians to make this illegal? So then they start getting in an argument and uh, Green Arrow calls him a Nazi. <laughs> He's like... Like what you've seen? Listen, I hope you enjoyed playing superhero out there. I hope it did a lot of good for your ego. Easy. You've no cause to yell at me. I have a job. I do it. Seems I've heard that line before. At the Nazi war trials. <laughs> so an SJW is calling someone a Nazi. This is a classic thing that has been memed to death over the last few years. So then a, uh, a soulful saint, uh, old black guy, pops out of freaking nowhere. I don't even remember seeing him seen in the background. I thought they were on the roof. Aren't they on the roof? They're on the roof. They, for some reason, while inspecting the, the, the tenement, they went up to the roof. That'd be funny if they're like, the roof's not bad. You know, the, the banister needs some work. Like, the roof, like they put some tar down. You know, so you're not going to get the rain leaking in. It's clean. Yeah, the roof's, the roof's okay. <laughs> so then, I guess, maybe he was just hanging out on the roof. Uh... And he goes up and he says, uh, I've been reading about you, how you work for the blue skins and how on a planet someplace you helped out the orange skins and you done considerable for the purple skins. Only there's skins you never bothered with. Okay, so he's, he's got the blue, orange, purple, yellow, green. What are the skins he's never bothered with? Let, let's find out what skins... The black skins... Oh, shit. The black skins. I want to know how come. Answer me that, Mr. Green Lantern. And then Green Lantern hangs his 
head in shame. Then he gets woke. He goes, okay, maybe I have been a dummy. So tell me, how do I help? He says, I'm no advice committee. If you want to bad enough, you'll find a way. And you know, I think you do want to. This is all he had to do. This is all he had to do. He's like, uh, Hey, so, so you're black, right? He goes, yeah, I'm one of the black kids. It's like, so you live on Earth, right? Yeah, I live on Earth. Where are you going with this? So I have saved the planet. The, how many black people are on Earth? 1.5 billion of them? He goes, yeah, so I've saved the planet Earth. I've also saved the solar system. I've also saved the entire fucking universe. All of which you live in dozens of times. So yeah, I done stuff for the black skins a time or two. Also, what are you doing on this roof? You just hang out here? Is that allowed? I know some landlords are kind of lenient, but most of them, they don't want you hanging out on the roof. This guy, this landlord seems like an asshole, but he also seems very laissez-faire. So I'm not sure. Are you allowed to be on the roof? Are you not? You know, we're doing a whole thing. So then Woke Lantern goes and tries to get the people from being kicked out. All right, cool. So he goes to where the landlord uh, works, and what does he do? He basically uh, says, hey, can you uh, not be a businessman and just like uh, uh, not sell this valuable property? To which he's like, no, get out of my office. And then he starts assaulting the guards who didn't do anything except for just put their arms around his, uh, you know, hey, we got to escort you out. You're basically threatening our boss. He assaults one and then another. And then he threatens to assault uh, the old guy, to which he gets called by the, the guardians. He gets uh, basically busy work with his asteroids. And then this is where it gets interesting. So Green Arrow basically flat out tries to extort him, or rather pretends he's going to extort him. Uh, the idea is by extorting him, he will be worried that he'll, you know, you're investigating his other crimes. So then he goes to cover things up. Here's the problem. We've never seen that this is anything other than a really greedy landlord. There has been no hint he's been, you know, part of the mafia or anything like that. Now, we end up finding, after another assault, we find out that he actually is mobbed up, or at least a criminal. He hires two people to kill the person extorting him. But here's the problem. Yes, this is a crime. You can't order anyone to murder anyone. But th he's, he sent two hitmen to kill someone who's committing a felony against him extortion so <laughs> it's like who's the good guy here now it turns out he's really bad now he's trying just to murder everyone after he was extorted it wasn't a real extortion it was just a fake extortion to get him to admit to his crimes but the recording device doesn't work so they got to figure out what to do he, they're basically like well you know it's not you know he doesn't have a cell phone he doesn't know that the murder didn't work so let's bring the guy back uh, you know, let's go back and be like, what? And then, but it, ha, what does he say? He's like, Green Arrow, did you finish him? I paid you to kill him, remember? <laughs> I don't know if you would say that to someone you actually hired to kill someone. Uh, but he's like, uh, ha, 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 stupid asshole. I'm the Green Lantern. Um, I like my dialogue better. And then there was also a district attorney and Green Arrow in the room or in the hallway. And he pulls out a grenade. <laughs> he has a grenade. <laughs> this businessman just has a grenade. Um, for people who might be confused, there, it used to be a funny thing to have a grenade paperweight. Or, uh, you know, or also like it would say, it would be on this like little stand and it would say, uh, do you have a complaint? You know, uh, take a number. And then it would have a number connected to a grenade pin, like ha ha ha. So, this is like an oldie Olsen thing from like the 60s and 70s you would see in, you know, offices and stuff. So then he catches him in a mouse trap because he's a rat. Rat traps and mouse traps are not exactly the same. Rat traps are like boxes, but okay, we, we, we get what you're saying. The, the, the DA is like, I couldn't pin anything on him until now. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, on behalf of Star City, I thank you. Also, you're under arrest for your multiple uh, felonies you committed in the course of your illegal investigations. But okay, fine. So then the epilogue, uh, they send one of the guardians to disguise himself as a human. This part is actually not bad. I think I'll read all of this. Green Lantern of Earth, heed me, heed my anger. 
You have been insubordinate. You disobeyed our orders. We commanded you to remain on station until we decreed your task completed. I... I'm sorry. That's right, Lantern. Apologize. Grovel in front of that walking mummy. Look at look at look at how triggered he gets. He's like, I I, I consider myself quite handsome. <laughs> I'm actually young for a guardian. I feel this is a bit ageist. You call yourself a hero, chum? You don't even qualify as a man. You're no more than a puppet, and the guardians pull your strings. Damn. Listen, forget about chasing around the galaxy, and remember America. It's a good country. Beautiful, fertile, and terribly sick. There are children dying, honest people cowering in fear, disillusioned kids ripping up campuses. On the streets of Memphis, a good black man died. And in Los Angeles, a good white man fell. Something is wrong. Something is killing us all. Some hideous moral cancer is rotting our very souls. I think it's a little bit over the top describing the Rachel Maddow show, but whatever. Um, and you, sitting on your mud ball, preening like a smug tomcat. How dare you presume to meddle in the affairs of humanity when human beings are no more than statistics to you and your crew? How would you advise us? That's easy. Come off your perch. Touch, taste, laugh and cry. Learn where we're at and why. I feel there is wisdom in your words. So then he disguises himself as this wonky looking hobbit and they go out to see it. There's a fine country out there someplace. Let's go find it. Three set out together, moving through cities and villages and the majesty of the wilderness, searching for a special kind of truth. Weirdly enough, it ends up being like an okay story, especially when it's revealed that the uh, woke idiots are assholes who just get lucky sometimes. Funnily enough, I did not feel hammered to take one point of view. Uh, and I've, I've heard that in the further stories, there's more back and forth. It's not just Green Lantern just hanging his head whenever he gets harangued. He will argue back. He will show his, you know, more conservative side, obviously. Green Arrow is more a liberal side. It's a conversation. It's a dialogue. It's good stuff. I have no problem with stories like this. I thought it was kind of fun and pretty silly. Uh, but it definitely did not feel like propaganda, which is what modern comics have always been political books feel like. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the uh, Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. And I will have more new and old comic book reviews for you uh, all this week. Thanks. Bye.